if I made video vlogs like this one, it's not because I'm complaining, it's because honestly, the whole the way that the world has been designed, the way that we have taken things lately, is just to benefit a few, and the people that are in the bottom, we barely have any benefits, you know. I have talked about how employers are now offering high deductible health insurance, which pretty much is just garbage insurance, because it means that you're going to end up paying for everything if you go to a doctor and all that kind of stuff. And again, they just want to scare people from getting sick or even going to a doctor. But honestly, like if you don't go to a doctor using the preventive care, you kind of having a bad disease and not knowing about it because you don't want to go to a doctor because they, your insurance will not cover, you know? It's counterproductive in my opinion. Um, the other thing is vacation time, you know, like vacation, we want people to be working all the time, and I get it, okay, we, we have things that have to get done, and yada yada, but offering people, like, so very little time for vacation, especially me as a single person, like, I don't have anybody else to take care of, of, of things for me, you know, if I take care of a day off to take care of something, I have to probably miss work or miss a few hours, so I need something that is flexible, not having hours or enough time off, pay time off, doesn't help me at all. And then, of course, let's talk about getting sick. Getting sick, New York State passed a law, and at least in New York State, you you have at least 40 hours that you can use for, that are paid, sick pay leave. However, like, let's be honest, you know, when COVID hit me, I was hot for three weeks. And um, it was mostly because I didn't want to be near anybody that, after, my first symptoms passed, I was still there was a cold. So it was more than five days. So imagine how ridiculous it is that you only give people five days of paid sick leave and they get sick and then they don't have any more time to, to recover, you know? And what if you need a surgery, you know? You need more time to recover, you know? Like those things are not, uh, seems that are not allowed, you know? But then yeah, we go to back to the issue of like, oh, they are offering high deductible health insurance, which means that you have to pay for all that surgery. So you're probably not going to do that surgery. So, <laughs> and it of course depends on the company that you work for, because I, as much as I didn't like, as much as many people don't like Walmart and yada yada, because of self checkout, etc., etc., Walmart has been offering better benefits in my opinion. They have paid time off, they also have protected pay time off. So when you work, you accumulate pay time off and also protected pay time off. Protected pay time off is almost like paid sick leave, but you can use it any time. Like, like if you needed to use it because you need a mental health break, you can use it, you know? And so you have better benefits in terms of vacation, paid vacation, pay time off, and paid sick leave. Or if you want to see that as protected pay time off. So you get more benefits of that of, of that job, you know. And it's sad that I'm saying that uh, that that, that one for better benefits. And other companies, like it's just it's just sad. Right now, I have to wait a year to have vacation, which I don't like because next year, whether they pay me or not, I mean, whether they whether I have paid time off, um, I'm going to schedule a trip to Puerto Rico in June. Like, I'm sorry. My nephew is graduating, I promised my sister I was going to be there. And guess what? I'm going to buy my ticket and I don't care if you get if if I have to lose a week of unpaid unpaid, that's fine by me because I want to go and see my parents. <laughs> like you think work has a priority? Sorry, but no. Um and they want to use pay time off to justify allowing when people vacation, you know, if something happens to me, if I have to take care of something personal like I have to take care of something personal so I'm like life it's only work you know I'm a human being and I got other things that I have to take care of everybody does not only me and people with children yeah they have other things that they have to take care of too so like allowing only like 40 hours like which is five days of vacation of pay time off it's ridiculous you know I think I want to find a job that offers better benefits um, and then when we talk about the job that I'm doing, you know, I, I've been always working since the pandemic started. I've been working in person. I haven't had the flexibility of working from home. 
I wish I could work out from home because I know I'm smart, I know how to use computers, but I haven't been able to find a job that I can stay at home and work from home, unfortunately. So I have to take jobs that I have to be in person. And there are days that I just don't feel like doing the stupid commute to work because I'm tired of spending money on gas, honestly. Um, but that's, the, that's life. And honestly, like I said, I talk about this because honestly, it needs to be talked about because otherwise things are not going to change. And if we want change to change things, you know, like let's talk about minimum wage too. Like up here, like companies started like increasing like Walmart and, and Amazon and Target. They started increasing their wages for workers. Do you know what that has forced? That has worked for other companies to increase their pay, the pay that they pay their workers, including my my job, because I remember interviewing for this job about two years ago, same, same company, different management, and they were offering me 15 an hour, and I was like, I'm already getting paid 17 an hour, you know, at Walmart. And now they have to pay. They finally came to their census, and now they're paying me slightly more than Walmart. Still, their benefits, they pay them out when I compare them to Walmart, it sucks. And a part of, I don't want to say that I have a great career in Walmart because I do not, because I want to move into something different, but it does suck because I had better pay time off benefits and better protected pay time off benefits at Walmart than at this company. And um, it really sucks and it's really frustrating. And uh, I don't know. I just wish that that there were better benefits, honestly. And then, like, of course, the health insurance is one of the biggest things for me, you know. And uh, I just wish that things were different, honestly. You, we give so much to our companies that it's like the benefits that we get. It's just like ridiculous even this time like I tell the person I bought a ticket to go and say this I'm going to only be able to work until half until one o'clock on this particular day you know and honestly I don't care if they tell me no you cannot leave at that time yada yada you know I will live I will live I will clock out at that time you're not paying me what are you gonna do fire me then you will have to find somebody else you know um, and, and I got AW so I want to leave at one o'clock during my, my lunch to take to get ready to go and see the show and hopefully next day I don't fall asleep anyway but those are things that are happening honestly I, like like yeah I get it that I, if I need to take a day a day off like I'm just being nice by notifying that hey I'm not going to be there but I don't have pay time off so there's no need to approve pay time off so I'm just telling you that I'm just not going to be there that day because of whatever conflict I have so I don't expect to get paid I understand that don't expect me there because I'm really not going to be there you know if I have a conflict but I also don't like abusing I like going to work I, I, I need to work because I need the money you know but when you are left with like only work, 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 and there's no time allowed for other things, you have no predicted time in case you take a day off for a particular thing, it just makes it difficult to plan for other things. Like right now, I'm just stuck. Like I have to go to work every day, you know. But it is what it is. But I feel like benefits needs to change. People. Employers may have need to catch up because like there are companies out there that offer better benefits and if you can't find workers for your company then maybe you need to restructure your benefits or what you are offering employee employees honestly. Because it sucks when you have for example the high deductible health insurance and you pay workers a uh, a wage that is not too high, they have to pay a high premium for the health insurance and on top of that they have to pay for their medical care you are pretty much like producing their pay in ways that are not on not fair honestly like that that like think think about it you're paying your workers as less as you can because you need to say to, to have profits for the company and you tell people at the management more money because they are management and they need the money I guess um, but the workers in the bottom they are suffering because of your decisions to have 
insure an insurance that is like highly highly expensive so they get taken too much money out of their pay and on top of that they have to pay for their health care out of their own pocket which means that they are pretty much not only they are struggling to make ends meet but now they are struggling to like get health care it's how I feel like it's a way of intimidation. So like if I work for a company and they don't have good health insurance, like I was like, I guess they don't care if I get if I get sick, I will have to find a different job. That's what it means, you know. Um, and I think that is unfair in my opinion. And uh, it's a disservice to the workers too. And look, I don't own a business, so I, this is just me speaking from my perspective of being a worker and having to deal with things that have happened to me in the past. And I had a high deductible health insurance through the New York State Marketplace and I got, I had to deal with a back problem and uh, I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to work anymore and um, out of a sudden with that, with that insurance, even though I was paying like 67 a month, when I went to, to a doctor, my medical bills began piling up because I, I wasn't working, I wasn't generating any income and uh, the income that I was doing from Uber Eats wasn't barely enough, and I accumulated medical debt because of that. And that's why I'm, I am talking about this, because people need to know what they're getting into. If your company offers you a high deductible health insurance, that is, that is a flag for the type of job. That is a flag of the company. That means that the company is going to, not only they will pay you a misery, but they also will not care about your health, will not care about you as a worker. So that's a problem. That's a pro that, that's problematic for when you earn a low wage. Yes, you will have money, but then get prepared if you get sick, you have to come up with the money to pay for health care because your insurance, being a high deductible health insurance, would probably not cover uh, your medical bills. And that is unfair to a level of of sadness that is really 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 unfair in my opinion and um, and again once again speaking from experience of having to deal with high deductible health insurance and how it ended up with me getting piled up with that and, um, and how that has affected me because I definitely went unpaid but but still like it's it's dead that you you cannot pay for that, you know, because you don't have the money. And, and your deductible, the insurance is not going to pay until you pay the deductible. So, how many times you go to a doctor, you know, to be able to pay for the deductible? Um, if you don't go often, then your high deductible health insurance means that you you will have to pay everything out of your pocket all the time. And then when we talk about vacation, like, who in the world thinks that only one week of vacation is enough for a worker? Because honestly, I cannot imagine only having one week of a year for vacation, you know? It's just the most ridiculous thinking that anybody has thought about it, in my opinion. One week of vacation is great enough, you know, and let's brag about being a great company, because most companies do, they brag about, oh, you are a great company, offer one week vacation and protected sick leave, paid, paid sick leave. How many days of sick leave? Oh, yeah. 40 hours of sick leave because that's the minimum that New York State requires and we're only going to give you the minimum because we just want you to be here working for us and being productive and if you're unproductive bye bye that's the uh, that, that that is just ridiculous you know only one week of vacation you know and I wish I could have spent more time with my parents because I don't see my parents very often I don't see them every year and you just want to give one week vacation I remember one time I was working for the government and the government gave, I had accumulated three weeks of vacation and I used three weeks to take a vacation. It wasn't pretty much a vacation but I went to North Carolina School of the Arts and um, I studied stage combat there because I like stage combat and theater. I paid for that. So my vacation time, three weeks of vacation that I could have gone to Puerto Rico and spent time with my family for three weeks and but I spent three weeks away from work. And honestly, I didn't care about that. I was happy there. I wasn't doing something that I like. I was learning. And um, even though it didn't feel like a vacation, for me it was a vacation. I didn't have to be at work 
doing what I working on something there was drama in the office you know so one week sometimes it's not enough what if I go on a vacation but then I need time off because something happened that I have to take care of because one of the things that I am concerned about and I have talked about this in some of my previous video blogs is what if something happens to my family in Puerto Rico how I'm going to deal with that and that is always one of the things that bothers me and that um, I have to be considering lately because if I can't travel to Puerto Rico, I will feel so guilty if I can't go to Puerto Rico to take care of family things if something were to happen to my parents. Like, I will feel so bad that I think it will probably spawn me down into a depression if I can't, if I don't have neither the resources to go down there, neither the time off to go down there. And to me, it has come to this. Like, if I don't have the time to go down there, if an emergency happens in Puerto Rico, I'll probably just quit the job, honestly, and I'll find a different job. Because I'm not going to, I don't want to deal with the mental um, issues that will come up from missing something important, my family related, you know. And to me, my parents are important because they are alive, but like in, in the near future, they are probably not going to be around. So I'd rather spend as much, as much time as I can with my parents, with my family, to important people. So like, my job is important, but it's not my priority. That's what I'm trying to say. And I have thought sometimes about moving back to Puerto Rico, but at the same time, knowing how the economy is in Puerto Rico and how the culture is, I don't feel inclined to move down there. It's like, even though I know that I could probably find a, well, I may probably be able to find a similar job to the ones that I have here. So it's, to me, it's not like, a, like, like I may not be able to find anything, but like unemployment is really high. When I factor the unemployment being really high, that to me is a problem down there because I'm going to feed myself, I'm going to pay for my needs, you know. Um, that to me worries me, but at the same time, I also know I have my education. I have, I used to have a professional engineer's license in Puerto Rico, so maybe I will get my professional engineer's license if I ever move to Puerto Rico again. But moving to Puerto, back to Puerto Rico, it's a little bit difficult, honestly, because would mean that I will have to give up on everything that I have here and I don't know if I want to do that so definitely those are the things that I've been considering and it all comes back again to the things that employee employers offer to the employees which are benefits in any case that's all I got for now peace everybody stay safe see you at the next video blog